What up, y'all? It's your hometown hero, the real Adam Coleman. Y'all know what it is, man. True ID Apologetics. And uh, coming at y'all one more again, man. And um, looking at the headlines and everything that's going on right now. And apparently, unfortunately, uh, we have another one of these situations where you've got a white officer that has apparently shot a, um, an unarmed uh, black man that's really hitting the headlines right now. Um, a lot of the facts are still, you know, coming out. Uh, before I understand that you have a gentleman, a uh, 20 something year old African American black man uh, by the name of Jacob Blake, you know, in Kenosha, Wisconsin, who apparently was shot seven times in the back, you know, uh, by a police officer. And from my understanding, this was uh, in view of his children, you know, so um, pretty serious situation, man. Apparently, there's been some violent riots out there in uh, Kenosha, Wisconsin, and I guess maybe some of the surrounding areas or whatever. So apparently the story um, just broke and uh, I watched the video and, you know, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know. You know. Not all these cases are the same. You know, I think that, uh, you know, sometimes there are some similar dynamics, you know, like, so for example, you may have, you know, kind of a white officer, black male dynamic or, you know, somebody who's, uh, you know, maybe just kind of white on black type of a thing. There may be some similarities, but uh, not all these cases are the same, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm watching this video and I think it's just really too early to tell, you know, uh, what the deal is. I'm, I'm just not really sure. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, you know, maybe I have to look into it further. Um, but with that being said, as I was kind of looking into it, um, there's a couple of things that came to mind. There's a couple of things that came to mind in terms of how we generally engage these kinds of situations. I mean, unfortunately, it seems like, you know, one of these kinds of things is happening like every you know couple months. And it's been that way uh, for some years now. Um, I think people who are prone to discredit um, incidents like these being examples of racism or police misconduct or whatever, you know, might say that it's kind of it's a media hype thing. Whereas, you know, somebody like myself, I think that there are some cases that, that do seem to be kind of media hype. But then by and large, I think that police you know, misconduct has been going on for a while and that's being caught on tape. <laughs> it's just, you know, that's where it's at. So, you know, I think you have a mixture of, of different things kind of going on. But anyway, that's, that's not the point of this video. But I do want to say this, though. I think that there are principles that clear thinking Christians ought to take into account as they're engaging these kinds of high profile cases. Uh, so first of all, one thing that kind of came to mind, I'm just going to make this real quick. But, you know, one thing that came to mind was be aware of what you bring to the table in assessing incidents like these. Uh, the fact of the matter is none of us uh, are a blank slate. You know, we all have an interpretive lens through which we view the world, including these incidents, all right? really any of our experiences. We all have an interpretive lens that guides and shapes how we see things. That's just a fact of the matter. It's part of being human. And there are different components to this lens that can come into play. So let's say, for example, uh, identity, right? You know, I talk about that on the channel all the time. But, you know, let's say that you have, um, you know, your ethnic identity can come into play, right? So let's say you got this white cop and you got the, you know, the person who's, you know, African-American has been, you know, shot or whatever. Um, you know, if as a black man, you know, I can identify with being a black man and, you know, encountering a police officer, you know what I'm saying, that was disrespectful or, you know, things of that nature. So in this given situation, given my identity and, and asp that aspect of my identity, you know, I might find myself, um, you know, relating to the black man in that scenario, right? Or let's say if you're a white man, you know, let's say that you're somebody who, you know, that you, you might identify with a white person in that scenario. You, you might see them as being someone who is in proximity to you from an identity standpoint. Or let's, let's flip it up. Let's, let's say that you're a cop, right? And, you know, you're, you're looking at that situation through the lens of being an officer, you know, aside from your experiences and, and knowledge as an officer, you know, you got an officer in this situation, you're an officer, you might be inclined to, you know, think of that person as being that officer as being a part of your tribe, you know, and that might impact how you interpret the situation. Right. So, you know, we bring, you know, our identity to the table as we assess incidents like these and that can steer how we interpret the situation given who we find ourselves relating to in any given situation, you know, like the high profile case with uh, Jacob Blake. You know, another example might be um, assumptions, you know, things that we just take to be true. You know, for example, uh, some people believe that, like, hey, most cops are good cops, right? That's just kind of a truism that people assume, you know, and they may, that's just kind of what they base their, their view on. 
Well, if you believe that most cops are just good cops and they're trying to, you know, make it to the end of their shift, get home to the family at the end of the day, then you're going to view an incident like, you know, the Jacob Blake situation and think that, well, you know, the cop probably had a good reason for what he, what he did, you know, or that, you know, maybe the, um, you know, the black guy was, was up to no good or he was probably up to no good. And so that's going to kind of inform and shape how you view the different players in this situation in terms of who's doing what and why. Right. Um, but let's say on the flip side, let's say that you don't assume that officers or that most officers are good cops. You know, let's say that you believe that most cops are prone to disrespecting minorities and particularly black people. You know, if you believe that about officers, if you bring that into the situation, then that's going to color, <laughs> no, no pun intended, but, but really that's going to color how you see the situation, right? That's going to impact how you view the different players uh, in any given scenario, you know, personal experience, right? Uh, let's say that you, uh, like myself, have had some actual experience, negative experiences at the hands of police officers. If you've actually been harassed by police officers, then you may carry that experience into how you see this particular situation, right? That may inform uh, what you think that officer might have been up to. You might think that, well, you know, I, I experienced it and I know people who have experienced police misconduct. So I'm inclined to think that that officer is probably up to no good and just maybe being disrespectful and escalate the situation unnecessarily or however, you know, you might construe that. You know, that idea may be not grounded in what you've actually observed or whatever. It could be a part of your personal experience that you're carrying into assessing the situation. Or let's say that you're a white person, you know, who you have done your best to not have racial biases and so on and so forth. And maybe you were accused of being racist at some point, but really, you know, you're not. And, you know, maybe you feel that people have against you played the race card unnecessarily. And so you're uh, defensive when you think that the race card is being played. So in any given situation where there's this white on black dynamic, you might have this inclination to lean toward not thinking that there's something that's going wrong because you don't want to give uh, ground to this notion of you know, racism, which you believe is being thrown around unnecessarily. You know, so you know, in that instance, your experience of having been accused of being a racist is now influencing how you see this other situation, right? So again, um, experience, assumptions, and you know, identity. You know, those are three components to our interpretive lens that impact how we see these high profile incidents, you know. Now, with that being said, I'm not saying that there's a problem with having an interpretive lens, obviously. That's just part of being a human and having a worldview and so on. Having an interpretive lens is how human beings navigate the world. That's just, it is what it is. But I guess the key I'm trying to get at here is taking stock of those things, right? Having a self-awareness of what you bring to the table and actually being self-critical, you know, questioning your assumptions, interrogating yourself to see if what you're bringing to the table is driving you toward truth or away from truth, right? Those things really matter, all right? Self-awareness, um, a willingness to be wrong, a willingness to self-check and be open to feedback to correct some of your assumptions and test some of your assumptions and whatnot. Um, all of those things are essential to pursuing truth. We have to ask ourselves, what are our motivations when it comes to engaging situations like these? Now, this is where we got to bring it back to the gospel. At the end of the day, my chief concern is the gospel, right? And so when I look out over the world, when I see, you know, just the depravity, when I see the murders and all these negative things that the world is caught up in, this is when I take the opportunity to say, look, you know, this is what sin looks like, right? This is what it looks like for mankind to try to be his own Lord and fail. This is what it looks like when we have systems of justice put in place that ultimately are inadequate to really bring about justice because man is sinful and unjust. You know what I'm justice is ultimately a transcendent reality, okay? That at best we can try to approximate ourselves to, but we can't really attain it because the Bible is right. I mean, the heart of man is desperately wicked, right? And that's what I wanna take occasion to point people toward, the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? Ultimately, uh, the answer to the biggest questions about immoral stuff that we see in our society isn't, you know, better laws and reform and all these kinds of things, right? Ultimately, the answer has to be Jesus Christ, right? Now, with that being said, we want to balance that out, right? Because we don't 
have a worldview, you know, the biblical worldview. We don't have a worldview that is only concerned with, you know, the sweet by and by, right? There's the other aspect, whereas, you know, I'm called to care about the well-being of others. Jesus said that the greatest two commandments are to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and then to love others, to love your neighbor, rather, as you love yourself, right? <laughs> Those are the two greatest commandments, right? So I say all the time that, you know, if we're going to live out the gospel you know, that we're trying to point people towards, right, then we have to be steadfastly committed to the well-being of others. That's what love is really about. So as Christians, our moral compass should always be tilting toward loving our neighbor. But the world's way of thinking will constantly have us trying to excuse ourselves from caring for others. Like maybe we see one or more of the people involved in any given situation is not being uh, part of the tribe that we see ourselves as belonging to. Or maybe the media or politicians or whoever have been spinning the story such that politicizing the narrative of the situation means more to us than the actual individuals involved in the situation. The reality is our moral judgments get clouded by all sorts of things. But at the end of the day, Jesus has called us to love our neighbor, period and to pursue justice, which is part of loving your neighbor too. If I'm going to be somebody who is an imitator of Christ, then I ought to be about the business of pursuing justice, not just for myself, you know, but for anybody within the context of my, I'll just say the, my realm of influence, right? Justice is not a dirty word that belongs to the liberal left. I'm saying justice is a biblical concept in its essence. Like I said earlier, it's a transcendent concept. It's something that flows uh, directly from the very nature of God, right? And if we're going to be about justice, if we're going to be about the business of, you know, living out this gospel that we preach, then at any point that we come across injustice, then it should be a part of the DNA and the life of the believer to oppose that, right? That's what love looks like in public, okay? So we have to set aside all these different barriers that get in the way of us living out the biblical ethic. And sometimes that includes the political factions that we subscribe to, uh, political ideologies that we've imbibed that haven't, and we haven't really strained them through the lens of scripture such that we've conformed those things to scripture rather than conforming ourselves to them. I mean, it's, <laughs> there's a lot that I can say there, but I'm, I'm just gonna camp out here. Let's have gospel, biblically minded motivations for the ways that we engage these things in the public square. You know, this is where the rubber meets the road in terms of our worldview, you know what I'm saying, and what's going on out there uh, in the world. So we have to have an answer. We've got to be prepared to engage this kind of stuff. So anyway, with that being said, y'all, y'all know what it is, man. Love God, love people. Take care of the things that God blesses you with. Stay tuned on his channel, subscribe, and uh, all that good stuff. Hit the like button, whatever, you know what I'm saying, share. And, uh, you know, stay tuned, man. We got some new stuff coming out. So with that being said, love y'all, man. Peace.